And I, if it comes to the point where it's like, all of a sudden I'm kidnapped and something's gonna happen to me, I'm gonna ask myself, I don't know. The previous was a bone chilling clip from Elliot Eastman's own live stream. He has a collection of live streams online, which detail some of his innermost thoughts about being where he is and what he was thinking. In the previous clip, he talks about what he would be thinking if he were kidnapped, what would go through his mind. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how much time he had to ponder that question when he was taken by armed gunmen. But today we're gonna to look into his further thoughts in a collection of clips and some thoughts from his wife as well on what might have happened. It's just like, um, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard for me, like living with my father too, back in the US, like no matter what I do, no matter how nice I be or anything, like it's, it's hard, it's just hard for me to live with him. I don't know why, it's just hard. All right, so let's unpack this clip. The very first thing we need to establish is he doesn't have a great relationship with his father and nobody that is watching right now is shocked. One of the things that I realized with all the things he had done, the loan sharking, the poor decisions, all the things that I had in my previous video that uh, showed the detriment of him to the community, I had to think to myself, where is the guidance of his dad on this one? And um, it seems like the two don't quite get along. It doesn't seem like a, a bad relationship, but it just doesn't seem like the father is approving at all of anything that he does, which I doubt he was approving of this move as well. What's also very interesting that um, is sometimes it's not what is said, but what is not said. There is no mention of the mother here. Where is the mother? That leaves a gaping hole in his life where he's probably looking for a woman for approval from. It's not like living with my grandparents who are just absolutely so nice all the time. Like, yeah, people are rude sometimes a little bit. So what we have here is a little bit of angst between him and his father and no mother in the picture, but the grandparents fill in. They fill in the love. And what's interesting in the previous clip where he talks about them is he values being nice over so many different things. It's like he's compartmentalized the world as a nice place where it's not good to be harmed. It's not good to be mean. Everyone is nice to you is kind of how I think he views the world. And I think that's why in the future clips we're going to see, he couldn't heed the warnings. He just has no way to compartmentalize evil and hatred and people that would go against his way of thinking. Did I adventure before I'm here? Yeah, I did my fair share of adventuring, like, in the U.S. and stuff like that, but not much, not really much, like, in the Philippines or anything like that. So here's another assumption I think we all had on uh, our friend Elliot, which is he had no overseas experience. He does say though, uh, I think he suffers a little bit from overconfidence saying that he has adventured all over the United States. And anyone who has traveled into uh, difficult countries understands that it is increasingly more difficult once you get outside the Western world and into the developed countries and into the developed portions of the developed countries, it gets incrementally harder as well. So he's a little bit misled himself on this and uh, he does let us know at least and confirms our previous thoughts that he had no previous experience overseas. Yes, we let our son play games and watch videos on his phone sometimes, but while it's fun for him, it opens up a whole new world, good and bad. So how do I as a parent make sure my son is safe while exploring the internet? Big shout out to today's sponsor, Family Safe. It's an awesome all-in-one parental control app that helps me keep my kids safe online while giving me all the tools I need to manage his digital habits. One of the most useful features of Family Safe is Screen Viewer. It helps me capture any suspicious content he might be viewing and engage him at the right moment. Another feature that helps me keep a close contact on his safety and behavior is calls and messages. I can monitor his call history and see if it has any suspicious or unwarranted contacts. It also detects sensitive texts inside of messages and offers me quick ability to identify certain keywords. Through Activity Report, I can monitor how much time he spends on each app and how to set schedules and block access to any of these apps with an app blocker. But I have to say my favorite feature is location tracking. I can monitor my son's live location 
see if he got to school, if he's anywhere he's not supposed to be, and set up a geofence and a time range so I can receive an alert if he's not where he's supposed to be. Family Safe is not just about protecting your child, it's about teaching them to. Help your child build healthy digital online habits and navigate the risks of this online world. Give it a try. Click the link in the description or the pinned comment for a three-day free trial. The right way to do it is probably to be like, you can do that. You just become a Muslim, and then it's okay. You can marry many women. It's like part of the culture. You can marry up to like seven women in Muslim culture. You can probably... Whoa. Oh, okay, so I'm going through these clips and uh, watching his live streams, and this he comes across this one, where he talks about how easy it is to just marry up to seven women uh, in the culture that is surrounding him and the one that he has come into, to just go ahead and switch over to the Muslim religion, like it's no big thing, like it doesn't really require much, um, you know. So that says a lot, if I'm in the watching world, about uh, who he is, you know. Is this American guy who I probably, if I'm a per person who's adverse to him being there, thinking, why are we having this guy there if he's just gonna make a mockery of our religion? Just a terrible, terrible take, um, no matter where he was in the world, but to do it in such a culturally sensitive place where the religion around him, the people around him take so seriously, and certainly those that take to the extreme and maybe pervert the religion based on the way you, you view it, um, that is pretty inflammatory. And I think this thing, maybe more than, than any other word that he said, aside from what we saw yesterday with the loan sharking and some of the ways that he viewed the locals and... Uh, this might have been the most inflammatory statement that he makes. The other thing I would say is people's attitude. It's hard to deal with a little bit sometimes too. So this one is a very short clip. It's without a lot of context, but it's very clear that he talks about the people around him having attitudes that are very difficult to deal with. And I don't think that helped him in the community. And we'll see later that I think there were some people who were definitely trying to do him a favor big time and he didn't listen to them. Monkey Noel. <laughs> no, I don't know if I'm pregnant or no. They said I'm pregnant. <laughs> So here we have a clip of Elliot's wife with her headdress off in her bedroom, I assume, and they're kind of having fun in a private moment, but it's not a private moment. It's actually being shared on the web and it's still there. And I would think that to someone of a strict Muslim faith, this might be inflammatory. I don't know if it, that's true or not, but that would just be my gut feeling. And um, I think that that's a problem a problem i would say that she is very sweet in the clip and i feel like in this clip she definitely has a relationship with him that was loving and she calls him a monkey and she's proud of the you know exercises that he's able to do and uh, i think she really cares for him no i don't want to go just only you and me i don't want to go just only you and me what i'm afraid I'm afraid of having you when you don't I'm afraid if we don't have somebody with us. So knowing what we know now, this clip is kind of tragic. I'm sure his wife was told by her father, whom I'm sure she doesn't go against under any circumstances, that he is not to leave the house without some sort of protection or other people. So he's one to actually go to the river. It's off the clip but he wants to go outside. He does like the area, he does like going in the river and to the beach and adventuring a little bit, but she is not having it. She's obviously very concerned for him. And the way that she talked about pregnancy in the earlier clip, I really think that there's love there. 
I myself married a 19 year old woman and I can tell you she was definitely in love with me and her family definitely loved having me there when I first came. So his family is kind of caught in this weird quagmire that we'll discover in the following clips where they start to show their fear through his words. I feel like I've been staying in this area for so long to the point where people, I don't even know if people like me anymore. Maybe they want bad things to happen to me now. It's like, that's how I'm starting to think. So it's like, it's really not good. Elliot, that's a lonely place to be, my friend. Halfway around the world, without any backup, all on your own, with everyone else around you that's different from you. I mean, I went through something similar in Iraq when uh, I knew everything was wrong. The whole <laughs> stage was set for something, but I couldn't pinpoint it as a leader. And and then it went wrong. And sometimes you just you just know. And intuition is important. And it's a, it's a developed thing. And it's really too bad that you didn't get to that point to recognize what was going on, my friend. Yeah, I don't really know, dude. Because the family boy is just scared to, like, they want to keep me in, like, a little box so that, like, so that they keep me as safe as possible. And then they, by doing that, they feel like they're keeping themselves as, as safe as possible, too. You know, being a single man is way different than being connected to a family. And once you have a wife, and obviously when you start to have children, and when you're living inside someone else's home that is not yours, that is your family, you become subject to the desires of the head of that household. I'm sorry. And I think there was way too much leeway given by the father here of that family. Uh, I really do believe that they love their daughter, and they were trying to love their new son-in-law as much as they could. But Elliot, you weren't heeding the warnings. And it's really unfortunate because you put more than just yourself at risk and they were trying to tell you that. Yeah, I've been taking Yeah, I don't really know because everybody's telling me right now there's people out there planning, planning to come get me, bro. No, but that's true though. People, there's people coming here to tell my family that there's people that want to kidnap me or they're threatening to kidnap me or stuff like that like every day every day this is happening this is like a real life thing for me here and that's why no no foreigners or no any other there's no tourists staying here because they're they're smarter than that but for me i've been living here i've been taking yeah I don't know. it's incredibly unfortunate this is a three-week lead time on a credible threat and it wasn't actioned and I think his hubris in this last statement is unfortunate. It comes through in his desire to build his YouTube channel in other clips that I didn't show on this video, but um, him and his desire to be some sort of pioneer, which is completely unnecessary. <laughs> Throughout history, there's been people that need to be pioneers. In the United States, we had to have people that had bravado and take risk and go across from one side of the country to the other. There's really not a lot of social gain to be had here by what he did. In March of 2016, Moscow, Russia, I was outside a restaurant when two individuals larger than me started punching me in the face and kicking me in the body, causing me to drop into the gutter. It was a rainy night and I went into the fetal position. One of the individuals grabbed me and put me into a local taxi. The taxi drove off. Nobody helped me. I continued to go down the road and tried to jump out of the vehicle. I was quickly grabbed, beaten again, and put back inside. He took me to a local ATM where I went in front of the ATM and put in false pin codes and tried to develop a plan. I saw a fence in the distance and decided that when I got back in the vehicle, I would quickly reopen the door and pole vault over that fence. Luckily, I got away. I know what the fear is like to go through tense moments at the beginning. Fortunately, I only experienced an express kidnapping and got away. My heart goes out to our friend Elliot <clears throat> and what his family is going through especially. 
There were many comments in the comments section that said the family was responsible if the wife or the parents were in on it. I don't think that's the case. I really think that the wife truly loved him. I just think he was in the wrong place and shouldn't have been there and didn't heed the warnings. Here it's like, it's kind of ass, a little bit. If I were to do it again, I would, I wouldn't do it like this.